Okay, continuing on. Okay. If x is 1 and y is negative 2, we get a slope of uh, negative a half. Then here we're at negative a fourth, and then here we're at negative an eighth. It's not great, but it should be yeah. a little bit, tiny bit steep. Something like that. Good All right, and then here, if x is negative 1 and y is negative 1, what's the slope? Still negative 1. So these are going to be just like this. So negative 1, negative a half, negative a fourth, negative an eighth. So wait, what's this graph even supposed to look like? You know, this one would be a tricky one. You want me to show you if we did the whole big picture? Yeah. You need a lot of, you really need a lot of points to get a good picture. So I, 1 over x squared y. So that's clear. 1 divided by x squared times y. No, they're very, very vertical. Wait, though. change the number of... Oh, that's so why, because we started all the way over here at 1. Yeah. And yeah, so they're right, they're right. So change the minimum, maximum. You want me to go out a little further? Yeah. All right, so let's go negative 5 to 5. So that's what we're looking at. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Okay. Whoa. That Wait, where'd the other crazy. side Crazy. Oh, we'll all talk about where the other side is in just a minute. That's That gets us into Maybe we should have used a different example. Yeah, this one's kind of strange. Oh, it's working fine. Okay, so we've got our slope field sketch. The next thing we have to do is find the solution to the differential equation that passes through the point negative 1, negative 2. So in order to do this, we're going to have to separate the variables. So we get y dy equals 1 over x squared dx. What's the antiderivative of y? 1 half y squared. Very good. What are you going to stop by? This one is a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. Okay. 1 over x squared, the most what? common mistake I see once students learn natural logs is start uh, to start applying it to every x that's on the bottom. But the antiderivative of 1 over x squared is not natural log of x squared. No, it's not. It's, uh, it's 1 half. No. It's not a... Use substitution. Negative 1 over x squared. Negative 2x to negative 3rd. Negative 1 third. Negative 1 over Do you guys hear Katie? She's got it. Okay, this is the same as x to the negative second, right? Yep. So many of you showed me on your last quiz that you don't know how to add to a negative number, right? So many people are saying the antiderivative of this is an x to the negative third. You're adding one. When you add one, what do you get? Negative one. So this is negative x to the negative first or negative 1 over x plus c. Okay, be careful that you add 1, not subtract. Add 1. Okay, now, do you want to go ahead and find c here? Okay, so everyone take a second and plug in the point uh, negative 1, negative 2. x is negative 1, y is negative 2. See what you get for c. Is it um five? Oh. oh, that's what I got. Sorry. Is it one? C is one. I was just wondering if I got it off the top of my head. Ah. I got that off the top of my head. Okay. So here's what we have. We have one half y squared equals negative one over x plus one. And now we just double everything, so we get y squared is negative 2 over x plus 2 
So y is plus or minus the square root of negative 2 over x plus 2. What do I have to change on this final answer? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. Which one should I pick? Minus. minus. Why the minus? Because, it's negative minus. Two. because in order to plug in a negative 1 for x and get a negative 2 for y, there has to be a negative out front here. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Good. All right. So that's part B. Part B is review. Okay, so you got part A, got part B. Now we have the fun part. This is probably the most difficult part of the lesson today. State the domain. Yes, we're going to state the domain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my function over here and erase this just so I have a little room to talk about domain. Okay, I gave you the notes on domain right below. Domains have to meet several criteria, and they're a little trickier than you think. The first thing that the domain has to do is it has to satisfy the domain of the original differential equation. So if we look at the original differential equation, what do we know has to be true or what can't happen? It goes from, it can't be zero. What can't be zero? The, the, uh, the in the denominator. So specifically, x, and y. x cannot be 0 and y cannot be 0, right? So to, to meet the demands of the original differential equation, we know that x cannot equal 0 and y cannot equal 0. All right. Now two. we have to satisfy the domain of the solution. So let's look at the solution. We have negative 2 over x plus 2 inside of a square root symbol, which means this stuff in here has to be what? Zero. Uh, has to be greater than or equal to 0, right? Okay. So what we get is negative 2 over x plus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0. However, this is y, right? So can it equal 0? No, why not? Because y can't be 0, right? Okay, so it's, we have to be greater than. Because if we were equal to, y would be 0. Do you understand that? Yes? No? Yes. Okay, good. We're solving a rational inequality. We have to find the critical numbers and make a sign line. So first thing I'm going to do is get this written as one big rational expression. So we have negative 2 plus 2x over x has to be positive. So critical numbers, well, we know we get a 0 from the bottom. And from the top, the top would equal 0 if x was 1. All right, let's pick some numbers. If I pick negative 10, I get a negative on the top, a negative on the bottom. So I am positive. If I pick a half, I get a, a negative on the top, a positive on the bottom, so I'm negative. If I pick 10, positive on the top, positive on the bottom, I'm positive. So based on this, the, the domain that satisfies the solution would be negative infinity to 0 and 1 to infinity. This satisfies this domain. And it satisfies this domain, because it doesn't include an x of 0, and it doesn't include the y of 0. So this satisfies both domains. But wait, there's more. There's a third criteria that has to be met. The domain of the solution to a differential equation can only be one interval. So you have to pick one of these. How do you know which one to pick? It must be the largest possible interval that meets the first two criteria. And contains the given point? That's yeah, the that one. Too. That's, That's too. a separate. Oh, okay, sorry. And it has to contain the given point. This is domain. Are we looking at the one that contains the x value or the y value? X. The x. x value. Now, in this case, it doesn't matter, but in the future it might. So which of these contains the x value? The negative, negative infinity to zero. That means the domain of our solution is negative infinity to zero. So then if we were to like graph it, 
Would it only be the uh, left side? It would only be the left side. If we had to graph one that went through this point. If we had to graph one that went through a point that was on the right side, it would have to be from here. So right? that's why when we, when we graph the check, that's, we try one of the points on the right hand side. And it only the went to the right, yes. And when we graphed one, which is why, guys, did you hear what Rayon said? That's why when we graphed the solutions, they either only went to zero. Ooh, this one, though, looks like, oh, it's going to two and a half. I don't know where one is. Yeah, it should only right. start at one. I don't know. Well, you split it in five, so you got to just go to two. Yeah, it's having, it's wigging out here. I think it's just from this point on, or that point on. I don't know. Anyway, but it can't. It shouldn't go in between zero and one at all. So that's your domain. It's actually called the maximum interval of existence for the solution to the differential equation, if you want the technical term for it. So, I don't understand any word that just came out of your mouth. That's okay. It sounded like English to me. <laughs> I think it sounded like German. Maximum interval of existence. Yeah, it's German. Nine, 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 nine. <laughs> all right. That's all I heard. Sketching a slope field is easy. Um, solving the differential equation you've already done. Finding the domain tomorrow is not going to be a question on your quiz, but it might be worth a couple extra points, right? Oh, so there you go. Right okay. <laughs> so the last thing we're going to talk about is how to match a differential equation with its slope field and how to sketch a solution, right? When you're matching a differential equation to the slope field, I usually just do it by looking at the slopes themselves, picking a few points and seeing which ones work and which ones I can eliminate. Remember, you don't want to look at which one looks like the graph. If I have a slope field where all the slopes look like this, whoa, it's x squared would be a trap because it's not x squared, right? So if you want to try to think of the solutions to all of these and see which one that might be, you could. Um, but let's just talk about a few. Ln x only exists for x is bigger than 0. So this one wouldn't even have any slopes before 0. That one's out. If I pick a point like 0, 1, or any line where x is 0, the slopes all look like they're around 1, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I plugged in an x of 0, this one I would always get 0, right? Mm -hmm. So that one's out. Here, if I plug in an x of 0, then the slope would always be whatever the y value is. So it should be getting steeper as you go up, mm -hmm. but it's not. It's staying the same. So that one's out. Wait, what? So like if I plugged in a 0, like 0, 1, it would be 1. 0, 2, it would be 2. 0, 3, it would be 3. Oh, okay. And oh, here's an easy one. 0, negative 1, it should be negative, right? Okay. So that's why that's one. that one's out. Um, this one. Let's check a, take, check a couple points here. If x is 0, the slope would always be 1. Yeah. Ooh, that works. This one, if x is 0, the slope would always be 1. That one works, right? So we got to try a few more. Um, I like five. You like five? Try the number like two or one. Here's yeah, two uh, works. Two works a lot better. <laughs> this one I would do with signs. Because if x was negative, like say negative one, you'd get, uh, ooh, you'd get one minus one. Whereas here you'd get one minus negative one. So if x is negative, these slopes would all be positive, right? And so that makes that one out. It's this one. All right. The last, last thing to sketch a, a solution, you have to follow the tangent lines. Ish. Roughly through the graph. And you have to go through the point. Make sure you go as far as you can go on both sides. Okay? Huh? No, they gave you a point here. There was a dot. Oh, 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 don't leave. Don't leave. I'm going to shut off the camera. Goodbye, camera.